It is beautiful, so thank you for singing, for opening our hearts to the love of God, to the love of Erica, who has touched us in so many ways. Again, I welcome all of you, and I know we come from a variety of communities, from Our Lady of Grace, and from uh, Massimo's seventh graders, and rising seventh graders, and the hockey team, and soccer team, and others, and of course, a few folks from Target uh, have landed here today as well, and so we welcome all of you. Uh, it, at this point, I'd ask all of us to make sure our cell phones are put away, turned off, and that we, during Mass, not be texting, not be taking pictures, that they are simply out of sight. So if you could uh, do that, if you haven't already turned it off, I've turned mine off because mine did go off once in a funeral. Yeah, it was bad. Also, uh, uh, our liturgy will be live streamed, and so uh, there's folks from around the state, of course, will be watching it, but around the country, and of course from Italy, from Sicily, there's folks in Rome who are viewing it, and I'm told there's even someone at the Vatican watching, or maybe not, but anyways, he should be watching. <laughs> so, and, uh, but just to be aware of that, so we are on live stream and, and to be attentive to that. And this is a Catholic liturgy, and again, I know a lot of us are Catholic, but maybe some of us, like my mother, aren't Catholic, and so I want to welcome you here. It's wonderful to have you here. Erica loved the liturgy, loved Mass. Uh, it was in her bones, and she loved singing, and so uh, Danny has asked that all of us would join the choir today. And I know some of you might like, not like singing, but today, let's just sing and fill this church with the sounds of, of the worship of God as a way to honor Erica. So God gave you the voice that he gave you, and you can give it back to him. So even if it's a little shaky, it's okay. Um, but also it's the Catholic liturgy, so there's lots of things. There's standing and kneeling and, and bowing and, and all the other things that we do in a Catholic liturgy. Incense and candles that are lit and we'll have some holy water. And at the end of the liturgy we'll have some incense. And so this, the church will fill with this aroma, this fragrance of, of coming from that incense. And one of the key parts of the liturgy is a meal. There's a meal of the Eucharist to receive Jesus. 
Uh, and we as Catholics really believe this is Jesus at that bread and the wine to become him. And when we receive, we express our unity with God and with the Catholic Church and with everyone. And so I know some of you are perhaps not Catholic. Some of you might not even believe in God. And so I want to respect you. We are where we are. And so at communion time, a couple of things that you can do. One is if you can come forward to receive. And again, as Catholics, we receive by extending our hands and saying, Amen, I do believe. You can also come forward to receive a blessing. It's a beautiful gesture. And you can just bow your head and cross your arms and receive a blessing. And of course, no one's forced to do anything. You can remain simply in your pew, and that's fine. That's what my mother, the good Lutheran, would have done. So, and I was not ever going to argue with my mother, nor should anyone. So, again, it's so wonderful to have you here. As we gather, I know we gather in love, we gather in gratitude, we gather in hope. This, uh, this song, like the other two, uh, that will be uh, sung for us is uh, also from the wedding of, of Danny and Erica, and so it's called The Prayer. And just allow uh, God's love to overwhelm our hearts as we listen to this, prepare ourselves for this liturgy.
the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Danny and Massimo and Maria, we gather with you, with family and friends, and we recall that day upon which your wife, your mother, your daughter, your sister, our friend, was buried with Christ through the waters of baptism. And so may she now rise to everlasting life with the Father. In baptism, Erica was clothed in Christ. She put Christ on. So through her actions of kindness and generosity, of love and joy, she be recognized as the daughter of God and welcomed into heaven with these words, Come, my blessed one, receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. If I was to join in singing our opening hymn, which you'll find in your worship aid, Sing with all the saints in glory. Again, wonderful to have you all here, and Erica lived a beautiful life, and so a couple of people are going to reflect a bit on her life with us this morning, and so the first person is her sister-in-law, Marcia, from Rome, and so I invite us to be seated as, uh, and pay, bring our attention after she shares. I'll invite a couple others to come forward. Hello, everyone. I'm Marcia de Salvatore, Erica's sister-in-law, but we've always considered ourselves as sisters by another mother. Last week, 
um, the last night of my visit, I remember um, watching them all together as a family. Danny was making crepes, Mas was waiting patiently, Maria wanted her Nutella, and Erica was making her chamomile. And I remember exactly how she looked like. She had her hair in her classic hair bun. She was dressed in Target pajamas and she was making her chamomile tea, which she made every night before bed. I took a step back because I just wanted to take it all in before going to Rome because it was such a beautiful moment. But had I known that that was the last time I would see them together, I would have never imagined. It's always been an honor to talk about Erica, though I wish I was roasting and toasting her and watching her with that radiant smile laughing at my jokes. Here we are in this tragic and unexpected moment. I remember years ago when Danny called me up in Rome and was like, guess what? I met this girl and she totally reminds me of you. And I'm like, oh, she's emotionally flexible and fashion forward. It's like, ah, oh, no, just the fashion forward part. And I remember the first time I met her at this Thai restaurant in Cincinnati, Bangkok Bistro. And she walked in and she had this black leather jacket, kitten heel um, boots and this pink stole. And she just had this radiating mane of hair. And she walked in with this gorgeous smile and sat down and she said, ciao, sorella mia. And in that moment, I'm like, oh my God, not only is she beautiful outside, but she's so beautiful inside and she looked good. From that moment is when our love story began and we have lived on different continents the entire time. But Erica has always been my, she's always had my back. She has been my sister, my friend, my stylist. Thank you, Target. Esthetician, um, hello, you were supposed to take me to get my first filler appointment. She was my motivational and inspirational figure, a great audience member to laugh at all my jokes, my sunshine on a dark day, and my co-travel planner. She is the woman that made me an aunt. I'll never forget I got to experience watching my niece Maria being born. Um, um, Maria is this funny, strong-willed, independent woman will grow up to be a woman. And guess where she got that from? And Massimo is like a star in everything, sports, school. He of course takes after his mother. Erica was so many things, so many people. She was Danny's rock, my dad's drinking buddy, my mom's cooking partner, Francesco's groomer, uh, a beloved daughter to her mom, uh, a best friend. Uh, to Brian, a caring family member, a loyal friend to all. She was an amazing leader, a talented employer in her profession. Target will never forget her. Erica is something special to every one of us and everyone she met because she just has this way of touching everyone's soul with optimism and generosity. She was a bright light in this world and we're all better for having known her. <laughs> Erica wanted to plan my Italian wedding next year. <laughs> And I know that if it ever happens, she'll be there in spirit. Now I just gotta send that memo to my boyfriend. Though she isn't physically with us, she is all around us, filling up this space with beauty and grace, generosity and love. When you see beauty in the world, I want you all to know that think of Erica. When you witness generosity, think of Erica. When you feel the sun on you, think that that's Erica's radiance shining down on all of us. So uh, now I'm inviting Erica's mother, Deb, to come forward, her uncle, Ed, and her great friend, Brian, and they'll share with us. And so. I'm so glad you're all here. Um, Erica blew into my life like a gentle breeze. Ten minutes after being born, 
her bright white eyes connected with mine as if saying, hold on, Mama, I'm going places. And yes, she did. Her heart was so big, always family, friends, even strangers, bef put before herself. Erica not once looked at color, race, gender, nationality, lifestyle, any different as if she were looking at herself in a mirror. In her eyes, everyone mattered. She adored our blessed mother so much her dining room was called the Mary Room. Statues throughout her house, rosaries, were a constant, even bringing back from Rome for all family members. Her faith was so deep it seemed bottomless. She loved fresh flowers, always carefully looking them over, smelling them, and always a vase in the kitchen, dining room, wherever she could to be admired by many. Growing up, her brother and her, her shared a part of, we all shared a part of her heart. We feel the emptiness we are now dealing with, knowing she is in heaven, having an experience beyond comprehension is our only comfort. You always will be Miss Baby Girl. You left us with many happy memories. But all those self-help books you <laughs> stocked up on and gave us gifts, there is not one for this. Just a void that we have to fill with all the joy, laughter, and your special way of being you, with all our memories, all our love. And I know you will always be here and around us all. <sighs> I love you. My name is Ed Kovach otherwise known as Uncle Ed. I'm going to share a little story about Erica and her grandparents that many of you are probably not aware of. In 1975, I graduated from college and started a career in Niles, Michigan. My parents, Erica's grandparents, were left alone in a big house. Then in July of 1977, Erica came along the grandparents were thrilled to finally have a girl in the family. During her adolescence years, Erica st stayed with Grandma and Grandpa's house on the weekends. Grandma would teach her how to cook, and Grandpa would provide her unconditional life and driving lessons. Yeah, she learned how to drive in a golf cart. I'm sure you folks have heard that about those stories. My, my folks were Catholic, and... The, my grandparents, especially my grandfather, made sure that when she went to a Catholic grade school and high school. Upon graduation from high school, she came to my parents and her grandparents said, I want to be a hairdresser. My grandfather was having no part of that and convinced her to go to college. After college, when she came back, she came over to the house and said, you know, I really still think I want to be a a hairdresser. Now, at my parents' house, they had a family room with a bar at, in the family room. Everything important, and I mean everything important, would be discussed at the bar, from grades in school to boyfriends to life. One evening, one evening, Eric and Grandpa, they had a discussion about her being a hairdresser. Finally, in fact, I was there. I went to bed. They were still going at it at midnight. I woke up in the morning, and the agreement was this. Grandpa relented to her being a hairdresser only after she spent five years in the business. Then if she wanted to be a hairdresser, it was okay with her. Well, we know what happened there, and we know the course that she was on. When Erica was recruited by Target, she gave me a call to discuss. We were living here, and uh, Carolyn and I encouraged her to at least come up for an interview. The night before the interview, we had a dinner at the house with Aunt Carolyn and I, myself, and, and we talked through the opportunity. I remember her dropping her off at the hotel the night before her interview, 
And I looked at her and I said, are you worried? Are you okay? And she looked at me and she said, Uncle Ed, I got this. Besides, I have this dr dress that's going to blow them away. <laughs> Always the fashionista. You know, every once in a while you run across a person who brightens up the room when they walk in. She was that light. Erica, I'm going to miss our late night conversations at family dinners. God bless you, sweetheart. You will always be in my heart. I'm proud of you and the woman you became. I was thinking the other day, and I was looking around, and I saw this poem that I'm going to read to you. It's very quick, and it's called, When Tomorrow Starts Without Me. When tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand. The angel said, my place was ready in heaven for, the, for above. And, I'll, and you'll have to leave behind all those you dearly loved. But when I walked through the heaven gates, I felt so much at home. For God looked down, smiled, and told me, welcome home. So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right in your heart. This is the last thing I would have predicted I'd be doing in my lifetime. I could easily spend the entire day up here talking about Erica as my best friend. But instead, I'm going to talk about Erica as an amazing mother. Over the years, I watched Erica grow from a young talent early in her career into a strong and confident leader. Over that same time period, she grew and shaped herself into an absolutely wonderful mother. Erica was a funny, kind, smart, and patient mother. She was literally a super mom. It didn't matter how much she had going on, Massimo and Maria were her absolute priority. And you just knew not to get anywhere between them. You would get that classic Erica side eye look, and if you worked with Erica, you know the look I'm talking about. <laughs> she was filled with so much love for Massimo and Maria, she would light up any room she was in. Erica always had a beautiful sparkle in her eyes, but it shone even brighter whenever she would talk about her children. Erica was amazing at everything, literally everything but she took being a mom to another level. Fiercely protective, undeniably devoted, and filled with endless love for Massimo and Maria. I really don't know how she balanced everything. She made it look seamless and effortless. There were times we would talk on the phone and she would question whether she was doing enough, which was ridiculous, but that really captures Erica as a mom. She was always striving for perfection. She wanted the absolute best for them, always. The last thing I want to say is to Massimo and Maria. You are filled with all of the best of your mom, and she passed along all of her greatest gifts to both of you. You hit the mom lottery and that makes this tragedy even harder. But you are now and forever will be surrounded by her love and the love of everyone in this building. To Erica, I will miss you more than words can express. Rest in peace.
you, Brian, Ed, and Debbie. Appreciate your words and reflections on a beautiful woman. So we've gathered here in prayer, and I invite us to stand and to bring our prayers to God, knowing that God gazes upon us and loves us without measure. Incline your ear, O Lord, to our prayers, by which we humbly entreat your mercy, that as you graciously numbered your servant, Erica, among your people in this world, you may now set her in a place of peace and light and grant her a share in the company of your saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite us to be seated as we listen to the word of God. reading from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, and it can be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the hoary crown for men, and an unsullied life the attainment of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right, and the world desire transforms the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore he sped him out of the midst of wickedness, but the people saw and did not understand, nor did they take this into account. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks Thanks be God. God. and truth, my spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death. Shall wander the 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the world of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a world of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to Jesus. And he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Maria is back here in the second pew. Maria, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. And Maria, on the day that you were born four years ago, you were placed on your mother's chest, on her heart. Your mother looked at you, and her world just went, wow. Just expanded. She thought she had already met the incredible love of her life twice over. When you came along, she knew an incredible gift of love. Of course, she learned that from you, Massimo. When your mother had you on her arms and your dad looked upon you and her, she just loved. And you, at a certain point, probably opened your eyes and looked back at her and she just looked into your eyes and saw eternity. And I guess after a few moments, she probably burped or something. She goes, oh yeah, here dad, take care of my son. And of course, you were sharing with me when you first laid eyes upon Erica. She was the one. And she was the one, and she played hard to get. But that little dog uh, and a little ice cream won her over. And there's this word for sacrament in Greek. And the Greek word for sacrament, and you can get extra points for this in religion class next year, Massimo, is mysterion. Mysterion, mystery. Mystery. And there are some mysteries in life. There's the mysteries of life that you hire Sherlock Holmes to figure out how did this happen, why did this happen. There are mysteries of life where you hire someone, you go, can you figure out what the cause of this is? And then there are other mysteries, Danny, that you just enter into. There'll be no answer. Like why you and Erica and not you and someone else. There's a three billion other women in this world, a few of them, all of them are beautiful and wonderful. But for some reason, it was Erica. There could have been a trillion other children born to you, but it was only Massimo and Maria. We know the, how the genetics work, and it could have been a million other combinations. So we enter that mystery. Not to figure out, but to have our hearts expanded. And when you had your daughter baptized, a vocation was given to her, in fact, even from all eternity. That vocation is the vocation, the calling to love, to love, and that was fostered at home, fostered with her brothers, friends, eventually co-workers. And eventually she'd find herself not as a hairdresser, but as a co-worker at Target. So great to have folks from Target here. Um, in case you're wondering, it was always Erica who helped me dress my best in black, 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 and black. <laughs> but the workplace isn't meant to be a place simply to make money. The workplace isn't simply a place to have the best designs of whatever. The workplace is intended to be a place where you share your gifts and your talents, and with your coworkers, you actually develop a certain relationship. You might become friends, but you learn to respect each other and honor each other and grow. 
So for all you who worked with Erica, you helped her in her vocation. And there she learned to love, to love even more. Because that's nothing like the vocation of growing up in a family, learning your family and friends and growing there. Of course, her even far greater vocation, her two children. Because when you have a child, as you so well know, your heart expands. Because she already was loving 100% you, Danny. And all of a sudden comes along Massimo, who demanded 100% of her attention. And somehow the two of you now loved even more. Of course, Maria was always easy to love. Right, Massimo? <laughs> but we are called to love. The goal of life, of course, is to get into heaven. I only know three Italian words. Spaghetti, meatball, and paradiso. Did I say that correct? Paradise. The Italian word for heaven is simply paradise. It's a beautiful word. We all know what it means and invites us to think of paradise as you look out on the gardens, you think of paradise, you look at the flowers, you think of paradise. As you look around, you can think of paradise because heaven is this incredible incredible community of love. In fact, uh, Danny, look around. Massimo, look around. You can just look around. Everybody can look around. You can, I know you're not supposed to do that at church, but look around. And you see everyone. And all what we're doing right now is we're loving one another. And you're saying, I'm here because you love. This is meant to be like a little image of what heaven is like. A place where everyone gathers simply out of love. Simply out of love. Don't need to get anything. Just here to love. To love the person next to me. Whoever that person might be. The person in front of me and behind me. Whoever that person might be. And that's what Erica's goal was. To help you to love. And her children to love. To help all of us to love. Whoever is next to us. That's why Jesus came to earth. Was simply to help us to love one another. So that we could spend all eternity and paradiso, and paradise. So one of the ways we do that is by living the Beatitudes. Beatitudes are those ways that we express to help us to get, if you will, uh, to get right on target, to get to heaven, to get in that community where we love one another. So as we are pure of heart, as we mourn with one another, as we are meek with one another and share our talents, it helps us little by little to get closer to our goal, to our target, to God, to heaven. A few moments, Danny, we will celebrate the Eucharist, which you've done a million times in your life. I know Erica would urge you on once in a while. And she does today, of course. When you were married, you received the Eucharist so that you might express your unity with each other and with God, who's always with us. Today, as you come forward, receive the Eucharist. Erica doesn't have to receive the Eucharist, because she's with the one whom you will receive. And so you can never be closer to Erica than you are at Mass and receiving the Eucharist, because she is with that one. So know that we are with you today, and we're always with us. So I got a little homework assignment. Is that OK? You don't have to do it, Massimo. Just everybody else, all the adults, okay? And that is after Mass, not now, after you leave, I want you to pull out your cell phone, again later, I want you to pick a date between now and next July 1st. And write on your Outlook calendar, send a text, a picture, a note to Danny, Massimo, Maria, Right. She doesn't have a cell phone. She won't until she's 25. I get it. <laughs> You're a good dad. So you can send a picture, a note, old-fashioned letter to the family, to Debbie, saying, I remember your mother, your wife. 
I remember this. I have a picture. Maybe you can download it or whatever, but send a little note to them. I'll remember, allow the, Erica's family to remember that you remember and to know that, to experience that. So your job isn't done today. It continues for the next year. Maybe you'll be at Target, you'll see some display and go, that's just how Erica would do it. Not me. <laughs> Not Danny. But your mom. All right? So Danny again, we love you. Masma, we love you. Maria, we love you. We're here because we love. In fact, we love so much that we're all wearing masks. I know a week ago, nobody thought, I can't wait to put a mask on again. <laughs> and here we are. In fact, there's some folks in Cassidy Hall, so out of safety. So again, out of love. You're here out of love. If there's one thing we can do to honor Erica is to love even more. So tomorrow, the next day, and the next, think of how can I love even more. There's nothing more to do. So let us stand. One way we can express our love is by praying, bring our petitions to God. For all who came before her, especially her grandparents, Carmela and Ed, and her cousin, Carlo, her friends, Ryan and Evelyn, and all others who loved her and welcomed her with open arms, that they welcome Erica to heaven and celebrate her life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who she left behind, especially her husband, Danny, and her children, Massimo and Maria, that they honor Erica's memory by loving and caring for each other always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For her family and friends, and for all the bereaved and sorrowing, that they may find comfort and strength in their belief that death is the dawn of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have surrounded Erica's family with prayer and support, that their kindness and generosity be rewarded, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, who is our res resurrection and life, may give peace to all forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those personal needs and intentions we offer silently at this moment, Father, we thank you for your incredible love. So hear these prayers that we bring to you. And hear these prayers, and we pray that you would bless us, that as you receive Erica into your embrace, we be consoled with your love even now. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Invite us to be seated as the altar is prepared for the Eucharist.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord. Look at favor, O Lord, on your servant Erica, for whom we offer you the sacrifice of praise, humbly entreating that reconciled with you through these devoted offices, she may merit to rise again to life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of mortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. us to kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Erica, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, we have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's so offer each other a sign of peace. us to kneel or be seated. Again, we are before the Eucharist, the very body and blood of our Savior, and those not wishing to express unity of life and teach of the church are welcome to come forward and cross your arms, indicate that desire, um, or you may simply remain in your pews. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who is love, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul.
Let us pray. Renewed by this life-giving sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of our sister Erica, to whom you gave a part in your covenant, may be purified by the power of this mystery. And rejoice without end in the peace of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Again, to you, Danny and Massimo and Maria, Debbie, all of you, our prayers are with you. That we've gathered here because of love for your wife, your mother, for you. And know that we go with you. Remember your homework assignment. Don't forget it. Massimo will be checking. <laughs> also, uh, just uh, afterwards, as the family brings the uh, Erica's body to... Uh, outside, uh, Danny and family will be waiting to be greeted by you afterwards on the lawn outside the patio. And so uh, if you wish to greet them again, we just ask that you uh, refrain from hugging at this time. So, And uh, eventually, uh, Erica will be buried in Italy, is the intent. And um, it's a beautiful thing. And so over the next days and weeks and months as that happens, again, to keep Danny and his family in your prayers. And there's this beautiful tradition that when you visit, uh, as I have done visiting my mother's grave since I was 22, um, that you say an Ave, a Hail Mary, an Ave, that beautiful song we just heard. And so to say an Ave there. And so probably not too many of us will be going to Italy to do that. But every now and then we can say a prayer, an Ave, for Erica and for her family. Until that day we all greet again. So before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. May our incensing of Erica's body express our faith that our prayers rise to God, that Erica in the flesh has been the very temple of the Holy Spirit, the dwelling place of God. One day we shall joyfully greet her again. And the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. Into your hands of mercy, Father, we commend our sister, Erica. The sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness, of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet again in Christ with you and our sister forever. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. amen. And Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Let us go forth in peace. Mm -hmm.